Hi everyone, uh, classic BMW fan in Quebec, uh, once again with another project on my E32. So if you are familiar with these uh, cars and these transmissions, you know that I'm tackling the valve body now. So I'm cleaning everything. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a rebuild because it's, you know, it's just a clean up and uh, refresh. Uh, but uh, you know, going through everything and uh, pulling all the pieces, cleaning them and brake cleaner and uh, putting everything back. Uh, so I'm just gonna talk about this job in general. I really enjoy it, uh, first of all, because it's really intricate. You get to uh, admire all the, the crazy engineering that goes into these uh, hydraulic systems. Uh, it's quite impressive uh, what uh, these uh, transmission manufacturers manage to do, you know, with valves and solenoids and cups and check balls and things like that. And uh, it's really amazing how uh, they can redirect the flow of, uh, of uh, oil, basically, to uh, apply clutches uh, so you can get more uh, efficient uh, driving uh, characteristics. So yeah, really cool in terms of engineering and just, uh, you know, looking at things. Um, and uh, also I want to say, uh, if you want to do this job, uh, it's not as bad as it looks. Um, you know, I use this, uh, this guide over here, you know, this guide uh, by a bad sector. Uh, it's hosted by um, Shogun, uh, his website. Uh, so you got uh, everything you need. Uh, this is for a 735i. Uh, sorry, a 535i E34, but uh, it's the same transmission, uh, more or less. So you get all the diagrams and everything. Uh, and uh, really, really helpful. Uh, really uh, appreciate uh, this uh, kind of resource. Um, and I also got these uh, um, ATSG uh, guides here with uh, you know all the diagrams uh, and the specifications and th things like that. And uh, I actually bought this guide, you know, because I want these guys to. Uh, have, uh, put bread on their table and uh, create, uh, continue creating uh, these uh, good guides. Um, so yeah, you really want good documentation, you want to be organized, uh, but it's not as bad as it looks. And uh, you need a lot of real estate, you know, to put all the parts. Um, and you have to, you know, I'm, here I'm putting all the, uh, part, uh, the, the bolts of the valve body. So let's say I pull this one, I know exactly where it goes. So just a tip, uh, except this one. Not sure if I put the right one there. We'll see when I get there. Yeah, what else? Oh yeah, the saga of the gasket. So this is the, um, uh, what you call it? Uh, this, uh, this plate here, uh, the separator plate. Uh, there's a gasket, as you can see, and uh, the ZF went through, uh, how many? I think it was like four, five, or six revisions of this gasket. It's crazy, the amount of uh, uh, changes that went through this gasket. Um, and yeah, there, it, it's really difficult to find exactly the one you need for your car. You really have to pay attention, you know, take a lot of pictures um, and uh, compare them to uh, uh, the, you know, all the stores online uh, that sell parts. So you can order exactly the right gasket or you can buy a overhaul kit that has uh, like four or five gaskets and the hope that yours is uh, the correct one to use. But uh, yeah, really difficult to figure out this gasket. I called two... Uh, transmission uh, parts store in Quebec. Uh, one uh, specializes in ZF transmissions, and uh, none of them could uh, could find uh, the gaskets that I need. Turns out I only had to order them from uh, Cobra Transmission in, I think they're in California or something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm waiting for the part now for this gasket. So uh, yeah, quite difficult to find. Um, this is the only issue I think with uh, these. Uh, valve bodies that uh, really causes a headache. It's the, uh, the gasket here. Um, so other than that, uh, you really have to be uh, organized. Like I said, uh, you uh, need to have lots of uh, brake cleaner on hand. You want to clean everything. You know, I'm, I really mean it. Everything, all the bores, uh, everything. You don't want to use uh, any uh, like uh, wool, uh, like steel wool or things like that in there. Uh, I just, you know, use uh, the, the power of a brake cleaner out of the can. Uh, and then clean everything, uh, make sure there's no, uh, you know, oily uh, residue, uh, the dark residue over the years. You want to get rid of all of that. Uh, the solenoids, you want to test them to see if they click. So except this one, the, all, uh, these three will click, except this one. This is a P, uh, PWM, um, pulse width modul modulation, uh, which means that um, it's variable and it can open and close uh, with a 
almost an un uh, unlimited range. So this one won't click, but uh, this is an on-off. Uh, these are on-off solenoids and they will click. So you want to test them, uh, test the, the, home, the ohms also, uh, the resistance, and to, to, you know, just to make sure that everything is fine. And uh, so these are all clean and ready to go, as you can see, looks great. This one as well. And yeah, by the way, you want to make sure that you pay attention to these, these tabs here. So these are retainers, you can see here, there, uh, they have an orientation, so you, you don't want to mess, uh, mess these up. And uh, yeah, also you want to take a lot of pictures. I mean, a ton of pictures, uh, like every side, every angle uh, and everything, because uh, it's critical to reinstall everything where it goes uh, from the factory. So uh, yeah, take a lot of pictures that way. It's a cheap insurance and uh, you know where you're going after that. Um, other than that, yeah, so this, uh, this block, I uh, just finished uh, removing all the parts that I put uh, there and I will uh, give it a good clean. I already cleaned uh, two parts um, so you can see how clean it becomes when everything is shot with brake cleaner and uh, scrubbed uh, with a, a, a cloth. Uh, so yeah, really, really happy with the result. And um, this one here as well. You know, it's like a, it's a bathing in in uh, hydraulic fluid. You know, all the all these years. So of course, it's going to be super clean. Uh, you just need to clean it, and it becomes uh, bright new, basically. So uh, yeah, I'm really happy with the result. I'm gonna leave them here. So yes, I'll continue the job, um, and I'll give you any tips if I have any more. Uh, other than that, I'll give you some uh, driving impressions at the end to show uh, to tell you if it made a difference um, or not. So uh, yeah, stay tuned and uh, I'll be with you uh, in a short while. So I was cleaning this uh, large block and this part fell out and I could not uh, figure out where it goes because it's not in the parts list over here, uh, not uh, either uh, on any parts list I found online. Uh, so I asked on Beamer forums and Shogun of course uh, came to the rescue and sent me a really useful parts list from ZF and uh, it had this part in it and it goes in this orifice over here. Uh, and it's basically a check valve and there's a small uh, spring and a check ball uh, inside. So really, really tiny. And uh, you can blow air from this side and it comes out from uh, this tiny, tiny hole there. Yeah, there's a small hole there, uh, but you can't blow from this side to, um, uh, to this side over here. So um, uh, yeah, really, really glad uh, that uh, I had this information from Shogun. So the right way to put it is just to put it in there and it just stays like this flush uh, with the top. So uh, yeah, really useful to know. And uh, there's, there's nothing else to it. So if you have this part uh, laying around, uh, that's where it goes. One thing that makes uh, reinstalling the parts uh, really easier is to uh, apply a, a lots of uh, ATF uh, on the part. So here I got a container and uh, you know you just put a lot of it over there on all sides. And then when you insert it in the right place, it should just fall into place without uh, needing to uh, push the part so it will just slide really smoothly just by itself. All right, just like this. Here you can see how tiny the parts are inside the valve body. Uh, you can see a tiny, tiny cup that I'm lifting uh, with a pick and I need to place it inside one of the uh, larger plates. And uh, yeah, it's really, really small and easy to lose easy to, uh, to flip on the wrong side because you need to put it exactly on the right uh, orientation. And I'm using petroleum jelly to hold it in place um, that will uh, uh, dissolve into the, the ATF uh, uh, properly. So you really need to go slowly, pay attention, go one part at a time. Uh, it's not difficult, but it's easy to lose track. So yeah, you need to go slow. One word about uh, the wiring harness for the valve body. So if you're working with uh, these uh, older um, valve bodies from ZF and maybe other uh, manufacturers as well, you'll know that the, the plastic connectors are really brittle. And unfortunately, one of my connectors broke uh, before I realized that I did not have to pull on the tab uh, with my finger. You know, it will just uh, unplug by itself if you pull it uh, moderate moderately hard. 
So uh, now that the damage is done, what do I do? Well, I can replace the whole harness. Uh, BMW still sell it. Uh, it's a, around, uh, I think it was uh, $175, $200 Canadian uh, from uh, BMW, which is pretty expensive for what it is, a short uh, wiring harness. Uh, or what you can do is change just the connectors. So if you look at the the plastic casing, there's a, uh, a manufacturing uh, number there uh, and uh, the name of the, manu the manufacturer, which is AMP. And uh, the part number is uh, AMP 92-8673-1. And uh, it's a fairly old connector. I found the schematics from the original uh, certification and it's uh, a connector that dates back from the 80s. Uh, but uh, you can still find them today, which is uh, quite amazing. I got this from uh, mouser.ca. You can also get them from mouser.com. They're really inexpensive and these will replace the old uh, brittle connectors. So they're exactly the same thing. So yeah, if, you, if yours are broken, you can replace them. And there's a, uh, let me show you, there, there are two tabs uh, on the inside. See them there, uh, two small tabs and your, um, your actual uh, uh, connectors uh, will slide onto the tabs and it will uh, just uh, lock them in place. So really simple design. And if you want to remove uh, the, the connector, you can, uh, you can use a, a small tool to push the tabs and it will release uh, the actual uh, wiring uh, connectors. Um, and of course, they will break in the process. You know, mine broke. That's why you, you don't see any, uh, uh, any tabs there uh, in, the, in my connector. Okay, now let's try to hook up these uh, spade connectors inside the plastic AMP casing and of course you want to take uh, pictures to know uh, which way it goes um, so for me the two uh, purple wires should be on top let's see okay all right that, that went in oh yeah i can hear it oh yes okay so both are fully in don't know if you can clearly see that but uh, yeah, the two connectors are locked in place. So if I try to pull it, it's not coming out. Okay, now let's try to connect it to this solenoid. All right. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, firmly in place. And if I pull it, yeah, it's not coming out. So that's all the connectors replaced on my wiring harness. I'm really happy with the result. Uh, I could not find a connector uh, for the speed sensor. It's made by AMP as well, and there is a, a part number there uh, that I'll, uh, I'll post uh, at the bottom there, but uh, I could not find it online, so maybe you have better luck. Uh, but mine is not damaged, so I will just uh, leave it as it is. Okay, so I reinstalled uh, the gasket between the, the larger uh, thicker plate here and the thinner plate. Yeah, you can't really see it, but uh, it's there. And um, I, started in, I started installing uh, all the, you know, the other parts. And uh, one of the holes wouldn't, uh, my uh, bolt wouldn't go in. And I did not want to force it. So it turns out my gasket was just slightly misaligned. Uh, and uh, I only saw it on one hole. So I'm not sure if it's a uh, manufacturing defect uh, from the gasket, but uh, I recommend before reinstalling everything, just take one of the bolts and uh, stick it in all the holes and uh, make sure that uh, there's no resistance, uh, it doesn't, that the gasket doesn't fight with you and uh, that everything is good to go and then you're sure that uh, everything is perfectly aligned. I was trying to connect uh, the last connector on this solenoid and uh, I could not do it because uh, I had a lot of, of resistance on this side but not on this side. So I decided to, uh, you know, stop pushing and inspect further. And uh, this is what I found. I'll try to point it. So there's a piece of the old connector stuck in here, in this corner. And uh, I'll see if I can remove it. There it is. So it's a fairly large piece, but I could only see the tip. All right, so that's dislodged. And I can finally connect my uh, last solenoid. All right, so fully clipped in, and of course I want to dispose of this piece because I don't want it to get into the valve body. So uh, yeah, this uh, just uh, shows the importance of uh, really, um, uh, really paying attention and taking your time when dealing with uh, these uh, small components. 
Okay, so the valve body is back on the car. It's not too bad of a job, but it is kind of heavy uh, when you're laying, you know, on the floor uh, on your back and, you know, trying to hold it uh, with one hand. Uh, kind of heavy and uh, a bit annoying, but uh, it's not too bad. And uh, you need to uh, push the connector uh, inside here first. And uh, let me show you. Yeah, it, it connects uh, on the other side here, right? Um, and also you need to make sure that this uh, sort of pin uh, is inside the detent uh, to, uh, I guess that's the shift uh, mechanism. Uh, yeah, you need to align uh, this uh, rod here. Uh, but other than that, it's not too bad. Once you put the, the first uh, bolt, it's really not too bad. And then it holds itself and uh, the rest is uh, pretty easy. So uh, yeah, and also, yeah, there's uh, this, uh, a uh, little bracket here for the speed sensor. Uh, you, so you need to make sure that it's aligned correctly and uh, holds the sensor in place. And uh, yeah, that's it. So uh, I'll put back uh, the pan and uh, fill it and go through the you know filling procedure. And uh, hopefully then I can see you in the car to try it. All right, so we're a few days later and uh, I finally got the right uh, oil level in the transmission. So I'll tell you a bit more about that. And uh, yeah, let's go on a short drive and uh, show you how it goes. I got the fan pretty low. You should not hear it too much. So yeah, it shifts uh, properly. Uh, so I got drive here, uh, I got reverse, uh, everything works. Do you hear that noise, that slight whine? This is only in first and second gear. I'll let you listen. And then it goes away in the, the other uh, speeds. So yeah, everything is smooth. The shifts are are correct the rpm is fine and uh, no issues so you might hear it a bit uh, much because of uh, my exhaust that has a leak um, but other than that yeah the car drives perfectly uh, it's a bit smoother and uh, but i think that's more because of the oil level because uh, when i put uh, four quarts um, i only drove around the block a few times got the temperature up a bit and then I, uh, I, uh, I adjusted the level, uh, but I still got harsh uh, uh, shifts. Um, so a few days later, I went on a pretty long drive, uh, you know, uh, quite far. And uh, when I got home, uh, I, could, I could tell you with my, uh, my temperature gun that uh, the oil pan was much, uh, much hotter uh, for the transmission. So then I checked the level and my, oh, my dipstick was uh, dry. So I thought, well, what's going on here? Uh, it was full before, now it's dry. Uh, it, I think it's because of the, the oil uh, circulated a bit more and uh, might, could be the temperature as well, uh, fluctuation. I don't know, but then I, I, I added uh, almost a full quart uh, extra. So I got now nearly five quarts uh, in the transmission. But remember that I had the oil pan off for weeks. So, you know, I could, uh, I had a lot of time to uh, let the oil drain. Um, but now with uh, nearly five quarts, uh, I get super smooth shifts. And uh, so if I tried, I'm doing uh, 80, 84, 85 now. So if I try to kick down, it shifts properly. And uh, yeah, no complaints, it's all good. So uh, we'll take a, uh, a right turn here and uh, We'll test the brakes because the brakes are really really good since i changed them to the ate um, uh, brake discs and the paget hella paget uh, brake pads so let's do a hard hard brake oh yeah it's really powerful yeah so other than the uh, loud exhaust i mean this car is really, really a, a good performer. You can really push it and uh, it just keeps giving. So uh, yeah, really satisfied with the smoothness. Uh, you know, it's not a Rolls Royce. It won't be as quiet and refined as that, 
I've been looking at uh, Rolls Royces uh, lately and they are tempting, I'll tell you that, but not the same price as well. But uh, yeah, still, you know, this is a, a really comfortable car and uh, got, there's a lot of wind noise today, so you might hear that. Um, but yeah, a really, really nice car and uh, there's a bit of vagueness to the steering. See? I, I can turn it uh, a fair few degrees and I get no movement. Uh, but you know, that's uh, the old uh, steering box issue that's common, uh, I think, all the way down to the E28 uh, car. So uh, nothing uh, really new there. I just need to uh, maybe tighten the, the screw and uh, maybe rebuild it eventually. But uh, yeah, so far, really satisfied. Um, nice transmission. I thought I, w I had to uh, rebuild it at some point, but nah, I think I'll leave it alone. I can live with the wine and the first two, two gears, but other than that, it's good to go. And uh, yeah, so I think my next uh, purchase now will be the rear muffler, uh, rearmost muffler. Um, but it's pretty pricey, you know, at, uh, I think it was 12, 1200 or $1,000 Canadian, which would be roughly like seven, 700 USD, I think, uh, in euros, I don't know, I'll have to calculate it, but yeah, it's pretty pricey, but I think I just need them to cut my, my muffler, use some clamps and uh, job done. It should really quiet down the car. Um, so that's my next move. And then I also want to look at uh, a vibration I get at uh, stoplights. Uh, so like if I'm stopped at a red light, I get a lot of vibration in the, you know, uh, this area here, uh, nice Miata here. Um, so I got a vibration and I want to fix that because all the bushings are new. Uh, the, the mounts, I mean, uh, for the transmission and the, uh, the engine. So uh, yeah, I'll need to fix that. Uh, but other than that, yeah, really happy with the car, uh, really satisfied for 1992. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't really get better than this. So I'll keep driving home and uh, I'm glad to report that the valve body uh, overhaul uh, was successful. Uh, there's no, no, you know, nothing broken. My car shifts uh, pretty well, as you can see and hear. Yeah really happy with that. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.